Alright, I think we should probably use um, the dust mushroom. Yeah, so that way we can able to keep our things moving for, uh, you know, for the sake of the actual star space after all. So, uh, let's see what number we get. We got a three plus two, so that makes, oh yeah, don't forget three as well, so that makes eight. So, are we sure, are we gonna make it though? Well, um, I guess for the time being we'll go that way and we'll stick to the left just in case by the forms of the golden pipe item so that we can purchase it. Yeah, in case if you probably couldn't tell by this point already because I think seems to say we're actually going to be buying that item a lot. So, yeah, to get the drill from this point. Alright, so no sign of a hidden block just yet though. Well, seems to say for this matter because even then, you know, you get the idea for that point. Alright, so looks like Monty Mole, he's definitely going to be using that golden pipe so that he would able to actually purchase the next star. So, oh yeah, I realize since the how the fact that he's got more coins than everyone else for this point now, I'm pretty sure that he'll steal a star from us. Which, truth be told, I'm pretty sure he doesn't make it there yet. So, but hey, on the plus side though, we would definitely go ahead and get ourselves our next star, the next star in the next turn. Yeah, which we hopefully we can able to actually get to that point. So, yeah, looks like Monty Mall, he was definitely going to be up to something at this point. So, yeah, specifically, but he forms off, well, he's got two stars right now. So, yeah, and Rosalina's now down to third place now due to that she's got less coins than uh, Monty Mall was. So, alright, so I believe the next star is going to be, um... Seems to say, I'm pretty sure he's, she's gonna be... Oh, right there. Man, I could have thought that we could have able to approach from here and then just land in on the versus base instead. But either way, though, we'll just have to take the forms of that, uh, you know, that golden pipe item that we can able to nap through. So, but whatever, though, let's just move on. And looks like Rosalina's gonna go for... What number she's gonna go for? A four. And in addition with that... One to to make me sorry, I can't speak today for this point. Uh, five space movements. So, all right, so yeah, not too shabby for the most part, though. Well, in terms of like the actual, oh, looks like Diddy Kong, he's also going to be using the golden pipe as well. Looks like fundamentally, though, is the fact that I'm pretty sure most of the other players, um, always attempt to able to purchase the forms of that golden pipe to begin with. Yeah, that's only because of how the fact that they really desperately want to buy those. And dream for the likes of uh, grabbing us, uh, you know, the next star and all that stuff. So, yeah, you probably might as well able to get the idea from here. Alright, so it looks like Diddy Kong, he's now up to two stars now. So, I'm pretty sure that every player else, except us anyway, that we've got, we actually got up to two stars. So, but... Pretty sure that Diddy Kong doesn't catch up until whenever he gets to the point where um, he'll either steal a star or either that he might get the next star. So, speaking of which, I'm pretty sure the next star is going to be right over there. So, yeah, I'm guessing that since that uh, Diddy Kong got himself 7, so I'm presuming he would able to get himself the next star, which, yep, he did make it there. So. And by the way, since you're actually going to be able to, like, as far as, as, far as what Toadette said, that um, she said about the fact that she was very impressed that if anyone else, or some players out there, were able to actually get not one, but two stars in one turn. So it's going to be one of those emphasis that you might as well be able to actually get rare chances where you weren't able to get yourself uh, one star on your one turn, or in as rare occasions that you can actually get two stars in one turn. So, yeah, it's a very interesting way, and looks like, Jesus Christ, really? The start space is as always near where Diddy Kong was. Jeez, I wonder why that she was going to go there in the first place, though. But either way, though, there's no doubt about that, because I'm pretty sure that we would able to actually use the golden pipe on the next turn. So, yeah, we can still able to get a chance to able to actually just to obtain that star to begin with, so... Alright, so it looks like we have another four-player game to play around with, and this time around we have... Oh, get over it. I hate this minigame in a huge passion. Well, get... don't get bowled over. Uh, Growls might roll in from the left or right. 
And basically, you have to press the jump button. So, that's all you have to really do for this point. So, the reason why I'm not looking forward to this mini game for this point, folks, because uh, this mini game to me, it feels pretty strict when it comes to timing on jumps and what have you. Because rarely, I did manage to jump at the slight moment, but the game tells me about the fact that I seem to able to actually just uh, uh, time my jump at the wrong time or jump at the right time. But it kind of reminds me of the forms of the hard rope jump mini game from Mario Party uh, 2, or in this case, Mario Party 1. But besides that, though, it's just the fact that this mini game is so strict when it comes to timing jumps. Because I swear I jump at the right time, but the game tells me about the fact that while I was standing completely still, now I did press the jump button, but it doesn't feel quite restrict on that part. So. Yeah, it's quite strict though sometimes for that specific mini game. But apart from that though, we're still in first place nonetheless. Even though we could appreciate about the fact that we could able to actually just uh, not only purchase the next star, but also by the forms of how the fact that we could able to steal a star from uh, the Lacker 2 as well. But unfortunately though, due to get over its game, or that mini game I should say, um. You know how the fact that it, it I just pretty suck at that mini game to be honest because either way though again the timing on that mini game is far too strict and for my liking because either way rarely do I able to actually just get a chance to able to jump over the growls but at the same time that the timing um, department right there just feels completely strict in my opinion but apart from that though then we get the idea for that point but it wasn't until when we get to later on through the other modes of the game then you know exactly what I'm talking about, mainly by the forms of the challenge road, because either way, uh, we'll mention more details onto that when we get into the actual challenge mode board. Well, at least for this matter, the challenge road mode. Yeah, as far as you can truly say about that, right? Alright, so next door is going to be at, um, almost to the very uh, beginning of the board, and this time around though is going to be on the far right, as opposed to the ones on the left, because you know how the fact that we always attempt to get able to get ourselves, you know, most of the stars from the bottom left, so, yeah. Alright, so I believe Monty Mole, he will definitely gonna go for that, uh, you know, that Lucky 2 star stealing for now, so. Yep, he'll go for it. So, uh, what I was kind of odd though, is the fact that most of the, most of the time, one thing I forgot to mention about this actually, is the fact that, well, Ever since then, that I'm guessing, yep, he's gonna steal star from us again. Yeah, because we're in the lead right now. I've no idea why computer players always attempt to choose the random choice instead of that one player specific, unlike in the forms of how it does it in any other Mario Party games. Well, to be honest with you, because I'm pretty sure the game has decided to able to actually just go for that specific player if someone else managed to select random, so. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, convenient stuff right there, but even though no, he's now in the lead, so... Oh well, though, I'm pretty sure enough we'll able to actually stall the star back on the next turn anyway. Alright, so what space does he ever land on? Oh yeah, the first is space, so... Yep, so it's time for a, ni uh, a mini micro game. See, Fernando, which ones are gonna be this time around? So it looks like we have is Rumble Mash Off, so... Basically, whoever gets the rumbles to the furthest, uh, wins. So, yeah, fill the rumble first, whoever gets their coins. So, Jesus Christ, 15 coins. Start. I know, it's a bit too much there, Pinky. And we got it. So, yeah, you have to be fast on that specific, uh, rumble minigame. And then once you do that, then, you know, you claim yourself your coins. So... And quite frankly though, we actually got ourselves even more coins now. See, Fernando, we should able to actually just to not only uh, steal, a lack, uh, steal a star from Lakitu or something like that, but also by the forms of how the fact that we might eventually try to come across into a star space eventually, if uh, some players else attempt to able to go after it. So, who knows, we're able to find out and join at some point. Alright, so it looks like Diddy Kong is going to go for that normal dice block, and he's going to go for just one. Yeah, but that's okay for him, because obviously he's now finally got himself an ally phone. So even then though, until the next turn, he would eventually going to use that. So because of that, well, he hasn't had his ally for quite a long time at this rate. Yeah, I know that, right? 
Alright, so let's see what the next minigame is. It's Sizzling Strikes, which I think is actually a pretty interesting new type of minigame. And once again, we need to hold the Joy-Con vertically, so let's get to it. Cook every surface of the cube. Your Joy-Con will rumble while a surface is cooking. And stop rumbling when a surface is fully cooked. So basically, you just have to flick the old Joy-Con upwards until you're able to lift up the pan. Now this minigame is so interesting because that's what the actual Joy-Con features comes in. Because even then, not to mention with the forms of the actual HD rumble functions, but I believe that minigame has also been shown off by the forms of not only for the sake of the actual, like, the trailer and stuff, just like, uh, Trek Harder and stuff, and also by the forms of how the fact that, uh, that has been also been showcased on Nintendo Treehouse Live back in E3 2018. Yeah, which is pretty cool if you ask me, Pinkie Pie, because even then... Although I will admit though right away, I'm not particularly quite an expert at this game, I will admit though, because there are a few times though that my uh, Joy-Con is actually acting messed up and what have you, mainly because of how the fact that we haven't exactly do it this straight up. So even then though, because of that, well, I'm sure we can able to get just a bit though, so... Yeah, as you see that little, uh, um, for that Joy-Con right there, uh, that actually tells us about the fact that it needs to calibrate it itself properly or something like that, so... Yeah, which is kind of like the same thing for how it does it in Mario Party The Island Tour, where... If your, uh, gyroscope controls is messed up on the 3DS, you can, like, press the directional pad down until you're able to calibrate it again. But I'm pretty sure enough it doesn't do that on the top 100 for some reason, because... I just have no idea why they don't do that. So anyway, since we've done with that minigame, so now we need to switch over to the horizontal position, and looks like we've actually now into turn number 18, so that means the last three turns. So, yeah, you get the idea for that point, so, yeah. And we're gonna be seeing all the exact same things over and over again, so even then though that, as should be expected, uh, we're in first place after all. And Monty Molly's in second place, Diddy Kong is in uh, third place, and Rosalina, he's in, or she, sorry, she's in fourth place at the moment. And um, also that King Bob-omb decides to join in and what have you, so that he can able to actually act out as an interview and what have you. So naturally, that Diddy Kong, he's gonna be on that particular part, and he got himself a custom dice block, so pretty cool for him though, pretty cool for him. And as usual, it tells you about the fact that with the actual blue and red spaces multiplying, so you can end up there again, you know. And eventually, at this point, is that Kemek, you'll actually, you're able to actually turn into extra, uh, you know, bad luck space into extra bad luck space after all, so. But this time around though, however though, I don't think we actually got that much in terms of the bad luck spaces, so I believe there are only three of them in this board. Yeah, unlike any forms of how it does it in Warm Storm No Ruins, that there's only like, I would say five or six. Well, if at least it all depends on how uh, accurate your numbers are, Pinkie Pie. Yeah, I know that, but hey. Alright, so we got four in addition with one, so that makes five. So naturally, we can now steal a star from, um... It's hard to tell which one should we go for, to be honest, because I know for the fact that... Well, obviously that, uh, Diddy Kong might steal his, uh, star back. So, naturally, we might as well able to... Nah, why not? Let's go for Monty Mo anyway, because I'm pretty sure enough that we've already did done it for Diddy Kong, so naturally, we'll just have to steal a star for Monty Mo instead. Because, you know, that he's, he's easily going to catch up for, not only for in terms of stars, but also the, the amount of points for that, too. So, uh... Another thing is what I explained about this actually, since how the fact that we are still recording for this particular board so far. Well, uh, turns out we've actually got ourselves even more items that we've got. Stuff like, for instance, that I've now finally got myself a much more better condition on uh, Shadow of the Hedgehog for the Nintendo GameCube now. Now, you know, I know you guys are probably thinking about the fact that, dude, you're actually wasting your money for that exactly the same game. But it turns out in my, uh, you know, I'm still currently doing, uh, Shadow of the Hedgehog playthrough on that specific Let's Play in mind. Um, uh, unfortunately though, I seem to able to still have some of these issues, like the disc reading issues. But, um, apart from that though, I managed to able to brought it for myself, and looks like my, uh, GameCube disc of Shadow of the Hedgehog is now no longer be scratchable. So, even though, hopefully I can get back into that, well, 
Oh, I, I wish they did try to say about the fact that I was going to go back into Kingdom Hearts Final Mix at some point throughout the majority of the Let's Play for the, for the time. But I just wanted to point things out right away. I think I should probably head back to Shadow of the Hedgehog first. So that way I could able to actually done with that game until we until we able to actually completely done with most of the Sonic games for this point. Well, along the same lines as the vibes of uh, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transforms, which again, I am also able to come back for that until at some point in next month. If eventually, if, uh, you know, Team Sonic Racing should be on its way for, you know, the PlayStation 4 and all that. Oh, really? He never seemed to use his ally phone yet. And it looks like he got himself his Dutch mushroom, but apart from the fact that he was able to actually, like, get rid of its own, so... Yeah, that's a little bit missed opportunity right there, especially if you get your, your zero, then, you know, you get a little bit of a missed opportunity from that part. Yeah, I know that. Rumble Fishing, a new minigame, and I believe this one also utilized the HD rumble here. Fish for the strongest rumble, you only get one chance, so make it count. So move around with the unlock stick and uh, uh, pull your Joy-Con upwards and if you feel the rumble means you can able to felt if the actual uh, fish is actually caught on the rod then it's your chance to pull it out with your Joy-Con. So pretty self-explanatory though really. This minigame is very similar to the forms of, uh, I would say somewhat similar to the forms of uh, treasuring uh, treasures from Mario Party 6, but except the fact that you only have like one chance instead of multiple chances this time. In addition with that, there is no point system, so naturally you only have like one chance to do it. So, yeah, you get the idea for that specific point, so I'm presuming that uh, we got ourselves our strongest rumble at the moment, so... I believe the majority of the other players though will not stand will not stand a chance. So naturally though, I'm pretty sure we have pretty much dominated it. So let's check out let's check out the results then. And it looks like we actually got ourselves the longest dragon eel. So apparently we're not gonna fish out for the forms of cheap cheeps. Instead, it was actually by the form of the dragon eels. Yeah, I'm not sure why, how we deal with all that. But I'm pretty sure enough though, then, uh, you know, you get the idea for that point. So it looks like we're still in first place at the moment, so, yeah, not doing so bad. And, uh, we've only got two turns to go. So, uh, turn number 19, here we go. Alright, so, let's just go ahead and, uh, yeah, why not? We're not actually gonna be using the Cornado, which, if you know, that, uh, much like any forms of how it does it in Mario Party Star Rush, that uh, you can able to actually steal coins and what have you. Unlike in Mario Party Star Rush, that you can able to actually place it on that tile on um, Star Rush, but instead you can able to actually just to use that item and try to steal for that specific player. Stuff like as you can see right there, that we actually steal coins from Monty Mole by the forms of the Cornado. So yeah, it's a very uh, unique way to able to actually notice that. So oh god. Um, you know, you know how the fact that whenever, whenever we get to the last turn, that uh, the shops are normally going to be closed. So naturally, we'll have to like land on that uh, event space for now. Yeah, just in case if uh, if you imagine how the fact there's going to be the happening bonus star at some point. So yeah, Monty Mall gets us three, and in addition with those, then I'm assuming that he'll able to catch up to the star now. Yeah, it looks like he did make it after all. So. Yeah, it seems more accurately though, he's the only one got more allies than us. Yeah, which is pretty odd, because either way though, that again, that uh, we haven't got the allies from the very beginning, but when we get to the later one throughout the majority of the board, well, turns out that Monty Mole, he's the only one who got the actual most of the allies at the moment, so... Yeah, it seems odd, but still. Alright, so, now he's on second place now. And, um, yeah, that's as far as I can go for. So, um, another thing I want to explain about this, actually, is the fact that, um, in addition with those particular titles that we've got, for, uh, Shadow of the Hedgehog, for the GameCube, for, a uh, much more better condition this time around, so naturally I can finally come back into that game after that disc reading error issues. And also in addition with that, we also got ourselves our new PlayStation 3 game, which is, of course, the Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection. Now, since we actually got ourselves Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection for about... Uh, well, at least for the Xbox 360 version, I think we got that back in Christmas 2010, but even then, though, because of how the fact that we can able to play Mega Drive games on the HD console, which is pretty cool, but, um, 
ultimately though, because the reason why we got ourselves the PlayStation 3 version for this year specifically now is because I'm pretty sure that um, the Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection has been out for about, I believe, 10 years now? Or possibly 11 years? I'm not exactly sure because I actually miscount. Or well, actually, I think I have to be safe for this matter, is the fact that I'm pretty sure the actual compilation of Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection at this point now has been out for about like 10 years now. And because of that, also uh, another reason that we've got that version to begin with is because, to be expected, more trophies to obtain. Yep, stuff like the forms of like specific challenges or what have you. So, yeah, you get the idea for that point right there. So, considering there's a little bit more redundancy and stuff, so. Anyways though, so I believe Diddy Kong is going to be purchasing the Golden Dash Mushroom. And, um, looks like I don't think he's going to make it to the forms of uh, the Lakitu anytime soon. So, naturally speaking that, oh wait a minute, I'm presuming that we're actually on a 1 versus 3 minigame, don't we think? Yep, it looks like we're on a 1 versus 3 minigame, so. And it looks like the next minigame we're going to be on to is, uh, Sign Steel Deliver. This one is interesting too. Deliver as many packages as you can. The team side can carry can each carry up to two packages at a time. The solo player can use the drone uh, to steal packages from rifles. So move around with your character and all that stuff on the team side, and then you know you get the idea for that point. And alongside with that, I believe this is also a mini game that has been shown off back in E3 2018. With, of course, Nintendo Treehouse Live. So, yeah, to be able to demonstrate of how the fact that her, how most of the unique mini games are in this game. However, though, I will say this right away, though. I think this is the only mini game we might actually could, uh, go ahead and lose on. Just because, well, if you somehow manage to able to, like, win with the other players, then I'm pretty sure enough that Diddy Kong were able to steal a star from us. So, for the time's sake, let's just, just wandering around like an idiot and what have you, and then just simply lose the game in the process. So, naturally speaking, that uh, we might actually go ahead and just risk it, because obviously we don't want to let uh, Diddy Kong steal a star or anything like that, especially with that stupid random section that they always attempt to select. So, naturally though, we'll let Rosalina take a victory here, because other than the fact that I feel incredibly bad for her, yeah, me too, especially because of how the fact that she's doing incredibly bad luck in that situation for that apartment right there. So, yeah, that's why we're gonna have to lose this, so, let's lose this anyway. Even though that, again, we won't, we won't do it for the time being, up, up until when it gets to the point where, um, you know, when, uh, some situations where some of these opponents might, oh, sh might actually go near to this, uh, the Lakitu or what have you. Well, at the same time, we still got, uh, two coins nonetheless, if we still manage to lose the minigame, so. But obviously, we don't usually go for that much, so. Anyways, the final turn in, uh, King Bob Bombs, Powder Keek, Mine. So. Uh, the star space, as far as I'm concerned, is actually on the danger zone, so, uh, let's just go ahead and switch over to, uh, yeah, let's just switch over to, uh, the normal dice block, so, okay, give me anything but a one. What? Ah, oh, dang it, we were so close. But, oh well, I guess it's all down to the forms of the bonus stars for now, so, yeah, we'll go, we'll go for that anyway, we'll go for it. So, um, I guess the final thing I should probably explain about this, or actually two final things, actually, is the fact that, um, another thing I've actually got recently is, of course, uh, the blue DualShock 4 controller, because naturally I'm going to be able to be using the black normal one for the majority if I'm going to be using my PlayStation 4 for the majority of the time, especially because you go you're eventually going to come back into the forms of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix for that particular Let's Play, and, um, also, for our own time, we might actually come back to Kingdom Hearts 3 at some point, for able to get more trophies here and there. And, um, especially noticeable, since we actually completed the game on standard mode, I think, um, in during in our own time, I think we should probably up for a challenge and go through Prowls mode next time. Even then, I think we should be able to save that up until whenever we do a let's play of that game, not until whenever we complete the rest of the actual series of Kingdom Hearts games. Oh yeah, of course, because, um, you know, I'm still at the uh, final mix of uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 still, so hopefully they'll keep us back, uh, keep on going back on track at the moment. 
So, um, and the final thing before I uh, end off this board off is the fact that um, the actual final season of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, by the way, for those of you the bronies who are actually going to be interested with this, uh, it does have a final release date, which is once again going to be in April, which I'm pretty sure we already know about this, but I'm pretty sure we got ourselves the exact release date now. So even then, it's going to be released on schedules at some point in the 6th of April, so... Yeah, who knows? We're able to actually be looking forward to see how the beginning portion of this season, how it's going to turn out. But as far as I've heard, the first two seasons is going to be cause it uh, the beginning to the end. So, yeah, it's going to be very upsetting though, doesn't it? Anyways though, what, don't wake Wiggler. Oh boy, we're actually going to be holding that up again. But uh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, pet Wiggler without waking it. Petting Wiggler uh, earns you points, but you lose it all if you wake it up. So, you know, just wave your Joy-Con and that's about it when it comes to, like, control scheme in mind. So, yeah, let's just hope if we don't wake him up. So this is basically, it's kind of like, uh, Bowser's Big Blast or Bowser's Bigger Blast from, uh, you know, Mario Party 2, Mario Party 4, and especially noticeable with Mario Party The Top 100, that, um, except the fact that rather than doing with the forms of the actual Bowser Bomb, instead, we have to rely on the Wiggler. But, apart from the fact that, well, it, it, it just, it's hard to explain about this, actually. It's the fact that, well, obviously, that, uh, you really don't are able to wake up, uh, Wiggler up, because the more you do it, as you can see, by these whole buttons you have Zeds, by the way, which means represent sleeping. This means how the fact that he will eventually try to able to slowly waking up. So, let's just hope if we don't able to lose it instantly. Although the thing is, though, is the fact that I'm pretty sure. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it looks like he's getting pretty tense at the moment. So, oh boy. Oh, I guess we'll screw it then. I think this will do. And does Monty Mole... Oh, really? He did manage to bypass you that. Oh, dear. Alright, so Rosalie is she's gonna go for... Oh, okay. She's got the same points as us uh, at the moment. Alright, so... Oh, great, we're up next. Um, let's just take as a safe so that we only gonna have to go for... Yeah, let's go for that. So that way, uh, I believe Monty Mole, he'll instantly, is out of here. Yeah, because, uh, again, if you wake Wiggler up, you'll lose instantly. So, because as you can see, for that points count for Monty Mole, then basically that he doesn't have any points at the moment right now. So yeah, that's about it, obviously. And let's hold the Joy-Con horizontally again. And we'll be able to see the actual final results in um, King Bob Arms Powder Cake Mine. Again, it's, it, it all depends though, really, because of how the fact that with the actual ally system in mind. So, yeah, this could be a little bit more of the possibilities going on here. So, uh, let's just see if how the bonus stars is actually going to kick in. And once again, it's going to be three bonus stars, because as to be expected, it's in 20 turns. So, the first bonus star is obviously the minigame star. It's going to be pretty obvious, it's us anyway. Well, the only minigame exception is, of course, uh, get over it, because of that strict uh, timing jump or what have you. So, yeah. Okay, Sightseer bonus, which means, you know, whoever moves the furthest space wins. So, if I'm guessing correctly, it will be Monty Mall because he moves the furthest, and plus with the ally system, then uh, I'm pretty sure now he conquers that, so... And finally, the Buddy Star, whoever that goes to, which I'm pretty sure enough is going to be at Monty Mall because I could assume because of all the fact that, you know, that um, his uh, lucky player is Koopa Trooper. Wait a minute, Koopa Trooper doesn't do anything, other than the fact that he's actually got it at the very last turn. But anyways, the victory on King Bob Arms Powder Cake Mine is... It's ours! Yay! Gee, I wonder how well that we actually did done for this board. Well, at least it turns we're actually going to find out on um, the actual results screen right there. So yeah, we actually did won two boards so far, which is not bad. But um, whenever we get to the third board, on the other hand though, well, we'll explain more on that until the next weekend. So, it might be a perfect opportunity until the SXSW panel should be on its way on that weekend too. So hopefully this would be a better chance to able to explain more s some of the stuff. So, uh, mini games, uh, we did got 175. Diddy Kong is the only one who got the hidden blocks pretty much. 
and uh, 11 items for most of us anyway. And yeah, looks like we got one ally each, but Monty Mo got more than that. So yeah, pretty interesting to say the least. And it looks like it's pretty close when it comes to the actual travel star, because as you can see, uh, Monty Mo got the most of them. Well, we did manage to lo lost by five, and then uh, Diddy Kong lost by two. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I couldn't imagine how the fact that if Diddy Kong managed to be able to win that star, then he should be able to actually catch up for that point. So, yeah, it's a pretty interesting uh, end thing right away. So, even then, though, um, yeah, it seems once again no extra bad luck space has been landed. So, yeah, because I'm pretty sure we actually did manage to dodge that no problem whatsoever. So, anyways, though, I'm pretty sure we've done with. Uh, you know, two boards so far in the Mario Party mode. So naturally, we're actually on a halfway point, and it looks like we've actually unlocked the final board in the Mario Party mode, which again, we'll save that after the next board is done. So because of that, we're actually on a halfway point of uh, the Mario Party mode. So yeah, because now we're going to be moving on to the third board until the next weekend. So join us next weekend on Super Mario Party Let's Play is the fact that we're going to be moving on to the third board in Super Mario Party, which is the Mega Fruit Paradise. So things should be a lot more interesting to say the least. But again, we'll mention more on that until next week. So see you guys then. Later, everypony.